All right, fifth graders, today we're gonna to practice multiplying decimals. On these first two examples, go ahead and grab a piece of notebook paper and work through them with me for your review. So I wanna remind you guys that when we multiply decimals, we ignore the decimal until the end. We are gonna set up each one of these problems like we would any other problem when we're multiplying, like we're multiplying whole numbers, and we're gonna ignore that decimal until the end. So my first problem here, 2 and 6 tenths times 50 and 8 tenths. I'm going to begin by placing the number with the most number of digits on top. So I'm going to write 50 and 8 tenths times 2 and 6 tenths. Once I've set my problem up, I go ahead and begin cross multiplying with my smallest place value, which will be my 6, and I just ignore the decimal until the end. So I'm thinking 6 times 8 first is 48. I'm going to regroup my 4. 6 times 0 is 0, plus 4 more will give me 4. And 6 times 5 will give me 30. Then I'm going to go ahead and move on to my next place value. I'm going to move on to that next place value by erasing what I regrouped so I don't get confused. I'm going to cross out the place value that I used and add a zero representing moving to this two that's in the ones place. So moving to the next place value, we've got to add a zero. Now that I've done that, I can now cross multiply two times eight, which will give me 16. And I'm gonna regroup that one again. Two times zero will be zero, plus one is one. And two times five is 10. Now I'm gonna add both products, just following my standard algorithm until the end. I'm gonna get eight. This will be 10, regroup my one, that's two. That'll give me 30, and that'll give me one, okay? My next step is to now go back in and count the um, decimal places in both of my factors. So I'm gonna go back up to 50 and 8 tenths. I underline the one decimal place value that number has, and I write one P to the side. 2 and 6 tenths, I underline that 6, that represents one decimal place value. Add those together, and that represents two decimal places. I'm going to move that number back in starting from the back. I'm going to go 1, 2, and my dot will go there. So my final answer here is 132 and 8 hundredths, or 132.08. Okay. So let's work the same process on the other side. And I'm going to first start by writing my number down. Um, 4 and 8 tenths and 3 and 7 tenths have the same number of digits. So it really doesn't matter which one I place on top. So I'm going to set my problem up and ignore the decimal to the end and just begin cross multiplying with a 7 because it's in the smallest place value. So the first thing I'm thinking is 7 times 8 is 56. I'm going to write my 6 down. I'm going to regroup my 5. 7 times 4 is 28. 28 plus 5 is 33. I cross out my 7 because I've already used it for multiplying. I erase my 5. And then I'm going to go back and I am going to add my 0 to represent moving to the next place value. And now I can cross multiply starting with the 3. 3 times 8 is 24. I put my 4 down. I'm going to regroup my 2. 3 times 4 is 12, plus 2 more will give me 14. I add both those products together. I get 6, 7, 7, and 1. Now that I've done this, now I can go back and count my decimal place values that are over here so I know where to move that decimal. So this gives one decimal place value. This gives another decimal place value, and that means we've got to move that decimal back into our product one, two places. That means my final answer is 17.76. Another way to say that would be 17 and 76 hundredths. Okay, all right. These next two problems you're gonna try on your own. So I want you to go ahead and work out these on your paper and enter your answers into Edpuzzle, and then you can check them at the end. Okay, so for the first one, six and 91 hundredths times two and three tenths. 
your answer should have been 15 and 893 thousandths. And for your answer for the next problem, 3 and 71 hundredths times 4, your answer should have been 14 and 84 hundredths. Um, if you make a, made a mistake, just figure out what your mistake was and correct it. And that will end today's review of multiplying decimals.